go through our life and we, we go through changes, but it's, it's about adapting and it's about, you know, evolving into the person that you are. Hello, and welcome to Episode 4 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. My name's Jeremy Lesniak, your host for the show, and the president of Whistlekick Sparring Gear and Apparel. On today's show, we have Michelle Moreau, a longtime Taekwondo student and competitor from Northern Vermont. I've known Michelle for a number of years, as my instructor trains under hers. She's an excellent martial artist and a close friend. I enjoyed the interview, and I hope you do as well. She has some insights into life and the martial arts that are quite beyond her years. Michelle Moreau, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Thanks, Jeremy. I'm, uh, so, sorry. <laughs> well, go ahead. A little nervous, but I'm really, really happy to uh, to be here with you and that you asked me to do this. I'm really honored. Don't be nervous. Uh, just pretend it's just you and I chatting, because really nobody else is listening right now. Hopefully <laughs> other people eventually, but for now, no, nope, just you and I chatting. Okay. All right. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your, your martial arts background? All right. Um, well, I started Taekwondo when I was 17. Um, it was something that I had been interested in for a long time, but I grew up, there were four of us growing up, so we never had a lot of extra money for that kind of thing. So I started when I had a way to get there and a way to pay for it on my own. And um, the way that I started, I have I had friends uh, my junior year that I got to be pretty close with that, that did Taekwondo, Lisa and Jess and Justice. And Lisa kept telling me, oh, you'd be so good at Taekwondo, so good at Taekwondo. And she talked me into helping out at Grandmaster and Levy's tournament that year. And by helping out, I got a free month membership. The uh, the tournament was, was in April. And I went and I was absolutely blown away. And I knew that it was something that I really wanted to be a part of. But it took me the whole summer to get up the courage to go to my first class. And... Uh, he hasn't been able to get rid of me yet, so. <laughs> what were you nervous about? I don't know. It was it was new. It was completely unfamiliar. It was, you know, whenever I start new things, well, most things, um, I get really nervous because I feel like I should be good at it right off the bat, even if it's something that I don't have a lot of experience with. So I put a lot of pressure on myself and get in my head and get kind of nervous. Um, so that was a big part of it. Okay. And so you got started at 17, and how old are you now? I'm 26. Just turned 26. Okay. okay. So nine-ish yep. years. Yep. That'll be nine in August. Okay. So tell us about that, that nine years. You know, Did you train all in the same place? Uh, what did you like? It's mostly been in the same place and in the same style. I do ITF Taekwondo, which focuses more on the philosophy and the patterns as opposed to styles like WTF, which focus more on sparring and, and knockout sparring. Um, most of my training has been with Grandmaster Dunlevy. He, I, I think he's an incredible instructor, one of the best that, that I've met, but I'm, I'm a little bit biased. Um, that's that's all right and to be expected. Yep, I've also had quite a few classes with Master Master Jordan, who's one of Grandmaster Dunlevy students. Um, I've taken a couple seminars um, in jujitsu. I've taken a couple of seminars with a, other various instructors, and uh, I took a couple of classes when I went to school at UVM with with Master Hart, which didn't turn out to be the greatest ex experience for me, but. Um, I, oh, there's so much to say. I don't know where to start. Well, pick something. What come, what comes to mind? Um, I think just the, the journey for me along this nine, eight and a half, nine years, I didn't expect it to be a way of life. I expected it to be, you know, kicking and punching and, you know, kind of like the martial arts movies where you're just a, a general badass and you, but I, I didn't expect it to be a lot more than that. So you were expecting a sport. Yeah. And what you got was, as you said, a way of life. Yep. And I think there are a lot of people that can relate to that. I, I certainly can. You know, I started really young, so I don't know that I had any expectations, but uh, looking at it, 
one of the, my, my favorite things to say about the martial arts is it's one of the few things in life where you get back exactly what you put into it. Mm-hmm. You know, if you compare it to a traditional sport, soccer, basketball, or even track, there's a, um, because almost all of it, 99% of it is physical, you're limited by your physical abilities and, and what your body's naturally capable of doing, whereas martial arts is so much more than the physical. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think that's a, that's a great point. One of the things that I really like about it, too, um, is that, you know, I, I played soccer in high school. I did, it, or all through school, I did track in high school. And those things were, were a lot of fun and some of the best points in my life, but they came to an end. And one of the things that I love about martial arts is that it doesn't have to. Um, Absolutely. We go through our life and we, we go through changes, but it's it's about adapting and it's about, you know, evolving into the person that you are and that's kind of amazing. That was very poignant. Great, great, great quote. I may break that out. <laughs> Use that as a sound bite. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, why don't you tell us your best martial arts story? You know, I was I was thinking about that question before before this interview. And the stories that came to mind... <laughs> weren't actually the ones that put me in the best light. They like they're not the um, you know, karate kid kind of final fight scene kind of stories. Um they're <laughs> they're, they're not glamorous. Um They don't have to be. Well if it, okay. <laughs> the first one I mean you don't have to you don't have to tell a story that's self deprecating, but Well, um, I mean it's not it, I wouldn't call it self deprecating, but it's um Okay, I'll just I'll just tell you. When I was at UVM, I trained with Master Jordan, and at the time I think it was a red belt or a high red belt, and he was doing a promotion for a kickathon that they used to raise money. Um, I don't remember what what charity they raised money for, but it's one very near and dear to Master Jordan's heart because uh, I think it was his mother that was part of it. Was it's I think it's like a hospice type program, but anyways. Sure. Um, he had a camera crew come in that night. And so we're doing kicking drills down the floor and, you know, it's, it looks really, really impressive and everybody's kicking the paddle really hard. So it sounds good and key upping. And, uh, I do a turning kick and a spin hook kick. And then I fall right on my butt right in front of the camera. <laughs> and I said, okay, that's great. They, I really hope they don't use that. And I'm watching the news the next morning at 6 o'clock, and guess who's falling on their butt? <laughs> they didn't. They did. <laughs> they used they used that footage of you falling. Yep, they did. <laughs> did they – was it just they were voiceover – there was voiceover during that, or did they call attention to it? Um, they didn't call attention to it, but it was it was there, and it's – you know, it's definitely a part of the martial arts, and um, <laughs> it's – I don't know. You have days when you fall on your butt. You get back up, and you keep going. Um, and sometimes you have days you fall on the butt and the whole state sees it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but hopefully but not that, too many are up at 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> hopefully not. And even if they were, it doesn't change anything. Right. Right? You still get up. Right. What's the that, that Chinese quote? Um, Man falls down seven times, gets up eight, something like yep. that. So. Yeah. And uh, the other That's one. A good one. <laughs> Go ahead. No, it's a, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You got another one maybe where you come out a little more positive? Well, <laughs> 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 well, the other one that came to mind, um, we were at a seminar with Grandmaster Dion, who is um, my instructor's first instructor. So it was kind of a big deal. And we were there and we're doing patterns and he asked me to do one yo. And... Um, you know, you start in, in ready stance A for one yo, which a lot of your listeners might not know. Um, but it's it's feet together, your hands are clasped a certain way. Um, and I started in just a, a chumbi position, which your your feet are shoulder width apart and your, your hands are in fists um, pointed down to the ground. And so I started that pattern that way about three times <laughs> before Master Snyder looks at me and goes, Sheena! Uh, my my nickname in martial arts is Machina, and he calls me Sheena. But he goes, Sheena, you ready stance? So I look at my hands, and I realize that I'd been doing it wrong in front of, 
you know, ninth degree black belt, Grandmaster Dunleavy's instructor. Um, but I, uh, you know, I kept going. And this and, is go ahead. This is not a really high ranking oh. form either. This is this is what uh, number number four. What was that? This isn't a high ranking form. No, this is, this is the, like the your... green belt form. So it's like the fourth or fifth one that you learn. Yeah. Um So here you are in front of a, a ninth degree. Yep. Messing up the not even the first move, but the the, so how you the start. readiness <laughs> yep. the the before the form <laughs> of a form that's that you'd been doing for years. Yep. Yep, so okay. uh, that's how it was going, and so I, get, I uh, corrected it, and I went through my my uh, my moves, and he had me do parts of other patterns, and he looks at me at the end, and he pats me on the shoulder, and he looks at Grandmaster E, he goes, you have a really good black belt here. There you go. So, <laughs> it kind of did end up positively, but I, uh, you know, I don't mind putting myself in, in that kind of light, because I'm not perfect, nobody is, and... I I think we all have those stories and you know I think the thing that's important to think about is that for for people listening that story doesn't sound like a big deal because they they weren't there they weren't feeling the anxiety the the embarrassment but we all have those examples where we feel that anxiety and that embarrassment mm-hmm. um I I'm I'm thinking of one where I was a week out from my black belt test and no matter what I did, I kept combining two forms. I'd start one and finish the other. Mm-hmm. And it was the first time I'd ever done it. But I was absolutely terrified. Now, you hear that story, and that's not a big deal. But to be there, to be in that moment. Yep. And I think the big takeaway is that we all have those moments, and we live through them. Yeah. And learning to work through them and to, to shrug it off and take a breath. That's a big part of the martial arts education. Yep. So cool. What has the martial arts done for you? How is it how has it made Michelle a better Michelle? I, there's again, there's so much there that I'm not quite sure where to start. Um, how about physically? Are there, are you, are you physically stronger? Have you improved in that way? Um, I, I think so. I think it's a, you know, it's, it's definitely a physical workout, especially some days when, when Grandmaster is in a bad mood, you never know what he's going to throw at us. But, um, (laughs) um, it's, it's a completely different way of training. Um, it's not an, like you don't do sprints off and sometimes I'll pull out suicides for a warm up, but you don't sprint off and you don't go for, for long runs. You don't, you know, do a lot of the things you'd normally think of for exercising. Um, it's a completely different way of moving your body and, and using your muscles. And, um, I've learned a lot of, of different exercises and, and ways to train on my own that I probably wouldn't have, um, I probably wouldn't have done without martial arts and and different emphasis emphases, um, just in in movements and and stretching and flexibility and um, things like that. I I don't know if that makes sense. It does. It does. So what I'm hearing is, you know, you you are you are in, in better physical shape. Probably. Oh yeah. You know, you were you were in good physical shape. You ran track. You did soccer. Mm-hmm. You know, you were an active kid through school. But this is giving you an opportunity to continue that and to refine your 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 fitness, if you will. All right, so that that's the easy part. How have you progressed? You know, have you changed physically? So how about some of the other stuff? How about other ways that you've you've benefited? It okay. sound you've got a pretty good circle of friends through the martial arts. It sounds like. Yep. Um, some of the best friends that I have, and um, ones that I keep in touch with most, are are from Taekwondo. Um, the thing that I love about that is you, unless you do it, you don't understand it. Um, like I could say that Taekwondo martial arts is a way of life, um, that it changes the way you think. It changes the way that you behave. It it gives you, you know, a path to go down, but you don't really get that. 
Um, because until you do it and until you experience it and feel it, you think it's, you know, kicking and punching and looking like a badass and, and things like that. Um, so having a big group of people that, that get that part of your life because, you know, it becomes a really big part of your life and getting a big group of, of friends or even just one or two that understand that it's, um, it's, it's a really powerful bond. And these people are friends that I'm going to have for the rest of my life. I completely agree. And, you know, it's it's something that doesn't – sorry, I just lost my mic for a moment. It's something that doesn't happen in every martial arts school, which is, is unfortunate. But when you find the dojos, the dojangs, where this stuff happens, it's really, really cool. I've trained at some schools, you know – where I was there for two years and I'm still close friends with people from there 15 years later. And then other schools that I trained at longer, I I, I don't talk to anyone. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a a family atmosphere that the instructors can um, nurture Mm -hmm. within the school. And and you're lucky that, that your school is one of those. And if listeners can't tell by now, um, as with the other guests that have been on Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, I, I know Michelle. Of course, I, I'm new to all this, so I'm starting with people that I know that I'm more comfortable with. And of course, over time, we'll reach out and, and we've got some guests lined up in the future that are um, a little bit more strangers to me. In fact, the one this afternoon, I, I don't know this man very well, but I know you. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I have been able to see how strong the community is with Grandmaster Dunleavy and and Master Jordan and some of these other Taekwondo schools in Vermont, and that's why I'm glad to be in the mix with you guys. Yeah, we're we're really lucky to have the community that we do. Sure. So we're going to kind of swing at the other end of the spectrum now. Okay. Talk about a, a low point in your life that martial arts helped you move through. Um, well, there was a point in my life, it was, um, it was between red belt and black belt. Um, well, that, that stage of training was, was really hard for me. Um, I actually ended up almost quitting when I was a high red belt. I don't know if, if we've talked about that, you and I, Jeremy. We haven't. Um, but at that point I was, I was actually engaged to someone who turned out to not be the right person for me. Um, I went away to school for a semester. I, I spent three months in Arizona and he um, ended up doing something that, that really, really damaged our relationship. Um, and around the same time, my parents officially announced that they were getting a divorce, which we had seen coming for years, but it still wasn't very, very easy to deal with. Sure. So <laughs> I'm getting emotional talking about this, but that, at that, okay. um, at that point in my life, it just felt like everything was crumbling. And, um, my, I didn't have a lot of self esteem. Um, and I actually ended up taking about eight months off from Taekwondo. I tested for my black belt that March. I trained for a few more weeks. I did my first tournament as a black belt. Um, that was the one where I did Kwon Gay. I You probably remember that tournament. Mm-hmm, I do. Um, and my self-esteem was just shot at that point so the next week I went to Grandmaster D and I asked him if I could talk to him and I think he knew what was coming but I told him that I needed to take some time off and he said okay but just remember that you are in control of your life and so I took mm, seven or eight months off because I didn't People in my school look up to me, and I have since early on in my career, even when I was a younger belt. 
I think I started leadership when I was a, a yellow belt working with the kids, but um, a lot of people look up to me, and I know that, and at that point, I didn't want them to look at me, and if I get a little bit of criticism, to, to start to cry. I didn't, I didn't want to be that person, because that's not what, what they needed. So I took, I took some time off, and, um, took, you know, worked on, worked on myself. Um, but I went to summer camp that summer, and I saw a whole lot of a whole lot of my taekwondo family there and it felt good to come back and to you know just have them look at me and big smile on their faces and give me a hug and say that they've been worried about me and that they miss me and they can't wait for me to come back um i didn't end up going back until probably close to november of that year and uh what brought me back was was my instructor he sent me a text which is weird because he doesn't really text people that much. <laughs> but uh, he sent me a text and it said, "Your life is calling. We want it wants you back now." Um, so he, you know, I I went back and I I came back a more confident person. I came back stronger than ever, and I haven't left. Well, <laughs> I kind of did. <laughs> we'll get to that, I'm sure. But sure. Um, well, let's. I kind of want to go back a little bit, and I want to talk about that eight months because sure. I think that that's where the important lessons are. Mm -hmm. So here you are. You've been through three sort of rough occurrences, you know, your your engagement ending, mm -hmm. your parents mm -hmm. announcing that they were splitting, mm -hmm. uh, and a, a, a performance at an event, at a tournament that you were less than satisfied with. Is that a good way to term those? Okay. Yeah, the um the the third one it wasn't so much about the tournament, um because you know, I, I go to, to tournaments and you know, I just go to have fun. I go to, to do the best that I can, but I I you know, there was so much going on emotionally that day that it didn't really matter to me how I did. Like even if I sure. had had done better, I would have still been upset. So Sure. Um that that wasn't a, a huge factor. I don't I don't even remember okay. what happened that day. I did Okay. So then we maybe we can call it two. Yeah. The, the first two. Yeah. But I I want you to go back and and think about those eight months and what was it about who you were as Michelle, the martial artist, that allowed you to move through them. Most people that go through those things, that that take that much time off, don't go seem to go back to the martial arts. In my experience, so something brought you back. There was something about your training that brought you through that time in a different way than most people would go through it. So I'm hoping you can unpack that a little bit for us. Yeah. Um... I say that there the the two biggest aspects of that are the the first one I'll talk about is physical. Um when I am stressed or emotional or you know have have a lot going on that's that's unsettling with me, um it helps me to to exercise. Whether that's you know go for a run, go to a martial arts class and kick stuff, um you know things like that um it just it it eases it eases me to to be get out mm -hmm. there and moving so part of part of that time when i was missing was you know when during that 8 months i was i was just in a bad place so i didn't get out a lot i didn't move i didn't have that outlet um so that was one of the things that, that brought me back was it was, you know, several days a week I could go there and I could get energy out and I could get frustrations out and it was, it was cathartic. Um, so that was, that was a, a part of it, a part that I missed. Actually, <laughs> during the end of that time, I, um, I started playing volleyball for, um, for Johnson State <laughs> College, 
Um, and volleyball wasn't something that I'd ever done before, but um, the the team needed people. They they have sm- somewhat small athletic teams, so they needed bodies. So I decided to uh, to join the team, and <laughs> it wasn't quite the same. Um, and no, I'm sure it wasn't. Yeah, I also <laughs> took a lot of like spinning classes while I was there, and and things like that. Um, but it just it kind of ties into the second point was the the community that at that point when i get upset i i kind of internalize it and i don't talk to a lot of people i don't you know unload uh, unload it on other people i don't talk about it not not when stuff is going on like afterwards sure um but in the middle of things i just kind of internalize it and try to deal with it on my own so that would involve a lot of me going home after school and going up into my room and just being on my own and and watching netflix or or things like that and uh it it was really lonely so you know you go back to taekwondo and i remember talking to um one of one of the people that trains with us name is patrick lacy at the the summer camp that I went to. And I remember him telling me that he had been thinking about me a lot. He missed having me in class and he was worried about me. Um, I don't know. The the community was was another big thing that I was missed because at that point there was so much bad stuff going on that, you know, I... I didn't feel loved. Sure. And that is one of the things that I love most about about the communities. You know, you can you can walk into class and the kids run up to you and give you a hug, or the adults that you train with they'll sit down and they'll talk with you. They'll ask you what's going on because you know they we all care about each other. And that wasn't something that I was feeling a lot at that time in my life. So. Sure. And this is kind of a a fuzzy subject, you know, it's 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 hard to to go back and you know, I'm already putting you in a, in an emotional place, so I appreciate you going back and sharing mm-hmm. some of those things with us. So may, maybe now we can kind of flip it a little bit and go back the other way. Okay. Um other than Grandmaster Dunlevy is there someone who you would say was was pivotal in helping raise you in the martial arts? Well, he was definitely the biggest one. The next person that comes to mind would be my friend Lisa. Um, she was the one that, that really got me started. She was responsible for me coming to that tournament. Um, and she wasn't there for a lot of my Taekwondo career because, you know, we had our senior year together that we trained. And then after that, we, we all kind of went our separate ways. She went to Canada for, for college. Um, and then she was back for a little while and, and moved to Berlin and was back for a little while, a couple of years later, ended up having to stay for longer than she planned and, um, and went back to, to Berlin. Right now she's in Thailand going to school actually. But, and um, for listeners, that's Berlin, Germany. Yes. That's, that's yes. Not, not Berlin, Berlin Vermont. Hampshire or Berlin, Vermont. Or, right. Or, um, yep. Yeah. Um, and she's, you know, she's, she's been a, a really big encouragement for me. Um, even now, because I'm, I'm not in Vermont right now. I, I took the last couple of months and decided to, to get out of Vermont and experience life a little bit more. So right now, I am currently in Montana. But um, even talking to her, about being away um i don't know she's she's been a a really really big support um a a big encouragement and just one of the the best friends that i've made through taekwondo um i don't know if that answered the (laughs) yeah yeah no that's that's i can there's there's no wrong answer to any of these so (laughs) And then um, um, after her, I'd say there's uh, some of my best friends, um, Brendan, Fred, Glenn, um, Jess. We uh, 
you know, we would go out after class on Friday nights and, and go out to a pub and have some drinks and, and hang out and, and talk. And they'd reminisce about the old days, which I wasn't really a part of because they've been doing martial arts for probably close to 20 years. And me, I'm almost nine. <laughs> right. Um, but just, you know, having having the support of them, too, has been a really, really big, a really, really big influence for me. Cool. Well, Glenn, you mentioned is, is for listeners is Glenn Stafford, who was episode two. Yes. And we had him on and, and talked about his physical challenge that arose and how the martial arts helped get him through that. And mm-hmm. that was a pretty emotional episode. So yeah. um, for listeners, you should if you haven't, you should go back and listen to that one. <laughs> so you mentioned we talked a little bit that you've done some competition. Yes. So tell us about your time with competition. Well... I uh I love competing. I absolutely love it. Um I, you know I Why? I started when I was uh, a high white belt with Chen Ji, the first the first pattern that you learn. Mm-hmm. Um and <laughs> I don't know. I it's just it's it's fun because you you take that time and you focus on your pattern and it's a little bit nerve wracking being up there in front of so many people but at the same time it's not about them it's about you and getting into that that zone and doing the best pattern that you can do and letting it it flow through you and come out um, patterns forms are are my favorite part of competition um, I, why I think that they really they really express who you are as a martial artist because, you know, I could I could go onto the street and pick somebody, teach them a few kicks and have them go into a sparring match and they could probably do pretty well. Um, but to but to get really, really good at patterns, it's the philosophy, it's the movement, it's so many little things coming together. It just You know, there are people when inspiring that can kick really high naturally. They can kick above their head without even trying. Um, they're fast without even trying. They can they have certain abilities that make them stand out at martial artists without having to work at it. But patterns are a completely different thing because you get out of them what you put into them. Um mm. if you take the time and you focus on, you know, the timing, the the movement, the the moves, how they flow together, all that kind of stuff, and you you put the work in and you, you get out a really good pattern. Um, it's it's something that's very, very personal, that changes with you as you grow, that evolves with you. And okay. it's trying to improve yourself every single time you perform a pattern. Um, right. That's. I think that's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I, I don't know. I mean, if you want to, if you want to keep adding that, you welcome to. But I think you summed it up pretty well. Yeah, that's that's why patterns are my favorite because they really show who you are as a martial artist. Um, that being said, I do very much enjoy the other the other parts of the competition. For us, it's normally breaking boards and sparring um, mm-hmm. boards. Breaking boards are fun. Um, the hardest thing about them is that it's about 95% mental. And I tell that to kids. I tell that to people who are training that have a hard time with the board. I said, if you look at it and you think, man, I hope it breaks. I, I you know, I hope I get it this time. It's not going to break. But if you look at that board, I tell them to think of the board as a really thick piece of paper. Um I I don't know. I just, I love it. Um. Yeah, you don't don't have to add more to that. That's, I think you've expressed it pretty well, and and, and I'm right there with you. It's it's, it's a way of, of, of exhibiting yourself, of challenging yourself, and seeing what you've got coming back. And for a lot of people, I think you're one of them, uh, they get better in competition. Mm Mm-hmm. So and the the boards are fun too because there's there's power breaks where you know you can get a stack of six boards and do a sidekick and for some people that's that's a challenge for them um and then there are, are some that are 
more like finesse breaks where you have like two completely different breaks going on at the same time or just a string of movements where you know it might just be one or two boards but it's it's precision it's accuracy it's um it's not just powering through it so that's another thing that i like about the boards is there there's a lot of variability in how you break mm-hmm. um and then sparring <laughs> When I when I compete at tournaments, it's usually about four people that are in my division, and uh, one of them, I don't know if if uh, we'll just call her Legs. That's her that's her nickname in Taekwondo. Um, she's one of those people that can kick above her head, and she probably hold it out there without trying very hard. Um, so a lot of people are um, are really really impressed by her with her because of that um you know she's she's pretty quick she can get her leg up wherever she needs to and a lot of times you don't see it coming um mm-hmm. but she's she's been my my biggest competitor i think because like i said there's only usually about four main people and every once in a while we'll get a new person in the group um but sparring is is a lot of fun it's you know knowing your strength knowing where your weaknesses are, um, knowing what your tells are for me. <laughs> One of the mm-hmm. things I do as I'm kicking is I close my eyes. Um, and that's, that's true for breaking or striking or things like that. If, if you look on my Facebook page, which, um, I don't think that I've given you information for that, but, um, if you look at pictures of me doing kicks and all that kind of stuff, 99% of the time my eyes are closed. That's, that's one of my things. Um, but it's, you know, learning your strengths and your weaknesses and, and different things you can work on, like footwork or timing or faking or disguising your techniques or, or things like that. And it's also about assessing, um, you know, the person that you're sparring with and seeing, okay, this is their go-to move. This is how I can get around that. Um, for, for legs, she can, you know, she can kick, she's, She's got some legs on her. She she kicks she really sure well. Does. She picks up her foot really really high, and a lot of the time she'll you know wipe the bottom of the foot across your face, especially <laughs> if you don't have your hands up. But um, she she has her weaknesses too, which a lot of people are so amazed by her feet that they they don't realize. Um, she's she could improve her hand game, which is where I usually get her. Um, she usually throws a really high turning kick that I dodge, and then I I throw a reverse punch get her in the stomach sure. and um that's that's how i've gotten probably the majority of my points on her kind of thing okay um so well, let's let, go ahead. let let's let's move on from competition this is this is good i think we've got a pretty good picture of what you're like at a tournament <laughs> which was which is the goal there um if you could train with any martial artist living or dead who might that be and why um you know, I as cool as it would be to see, um, like General Choi, who you know wrote the the book on ITF Taekwondo or other historical figures like that. Um, the the person that came to mind for this would be um, my instructor when he was young, when when he was oh. when he was in his prime, when he was competing um, nationally and internationally. Um, and that's a lot of that is because I feel like I could I could relate to him a little bit better than I could relate to you know the Korean um, um, I don't know how to put this um, the founders yeah um, you know the the real military um, I don't know hardcore kind of taekwondo. Sure. Um, which is is where Master D came from, uh, Grandmaster D, and I. Even since I started, I've seen his his style a little bit change. It's not quite as. How do I want to put this? I kind of hope he doesn't hear Hard, this, but hardcore. Yeah, he might. He might. <laughs> I'm 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 sure if he, if he's a little more gentle than he was. I'm sure he's aware of it. Yeah. Um, Times change. People change. Yeah. 
Well, that, he's, he's not as know, quite as hardcore as he was when I started. Um, but I, you know, I'd, I would just love to see him in his prime and see how he trained and see, you know, it, the, the kind of animal that he was back then. Sure. You, you know, you're the you're the first person to answer this question in that way with not just a person, but a time. Mm. So that's kind of neat. Um, next few questions are, are, are pretty straightforward and, and easy. So we'll, we'll start wrapping up here. Okay. Do you have a favorite martial arts movie? I have to go with, with the first karate kid. Oh, the old one, the quintessential classic. Okay. Um, I, I, I dated a, a martial artist for a while, and he exposed me to a, a bunch of martial arts movies, like The Best of the Best or the Ip Man, Ip Man movies. And those are cool, but, um, I, you know, i got to go with the original Karate Kid. I just, I love it. <laughs> the newer one with, um, with Will, Will Smith's son is, is pretty good, too, but the, the old one just gets me. Mm. There's, there's something pretty magical about it. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. How about a martial arts actor? Is there a favorite? I don't really have a favorite, no. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say I really have a favorite. Okay. How about any martial arts books that you might recommend? Um, this is going to sound kind of silly. But when I was in middle or high school, the library had this set of books called The Samurai Girl. And, you know, they're, they're not based on any sort of fact, but it's about this girl who, um, she was, her father was kind of a crime lord in Japan, and she didn't know that, so she came to America um, after her her wedding went sour, her, hus- her to-be husband was killed, so she came to America and met up with... Um, Met up with this guy from her, from her homeland who who turned her into I, I don't remember if it was kung fu or karate that they did but turned her into a, a little samurai. Um, and I know that sounds kind of silly and <laughs> it's complete fiction. Um, that's okay. But um, it, it, I'd say that that's my favorite martial arts book that I've read. Sounds like it may have fed your your latent desire to get into the martial arts. So yeah, it did those <laughs> silly those silly books may be the reason that we're talking that I even know you today. So, so I'm not going to say that silly. And so our last question, you got any martial arts related goals? Anything you're hoping to do in the future? Well, I mean, there's always the, the desire to keep, keep going. Um, you know, I'd love to get my third done. I'd, I'd love to start my master someday. Um, but more immediately, I'm I'm going to be starting grad school in a couple months, and I'm going to be starting school in Virginia, so I'll be I'll be quite a, a ways away from home. Um, but one thing that I'm I'm trying to I'm, I'm thinking of doing is is starting some sort of a martial arts club or or class um, on campus. It wouldn't be anything official, probably. We you know we wouldn't have uniforms, we wouldn't have the ranking system. But I think that it's really important for people to you know to to know how to defend themselves even you know if they get into an altercation with somebody on on the street knowing how to you know throw a a front kick to the groin or a few simple um you know escapes kind of thing um i would i would love to get something going like that so you want to teach that's your you're you're looking to teach in the future yeah, um, I don't okay. know if I would ever own my own school, but well, I, I I would like to to teach a little bit because I do enjoy it. I think that's great. Yeah, it's all right. It's, teaching is a is a different kind of training too. It's probably more than than I want to discuss right now. But <laughs> sure, no, that's all right. And then anybody out there that that's listening that does teach that has spent any significant time teaching knows how big of a deal that is and how much you learn teaching yeah. yourself. Yep. And learning how, so to, how to reach people the way that they teach too, because it's, mm. you have to adapt to people and learn how to, how to best serve them. So. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, is there anything else that you want to share or promote or, or let people know about before we wrap up? Um, probably the only thing I want to say is if you're listening to this and, and you're not, a martial artist, but you want to be definitely, definitely look into it. 
Um, it's, it's, it can be life changing. And, you know, I've, I, I don't think I mean, there's anything in the world that, that if you offered it to me, if, you know, you could erase my martial arts fest, I don't think I would take it. Wow. I, I don't think I have anything else I can say to that. That's, that's a big one too. We've got some, some good quotes out of this interview for sure. Oh, good. <laughs> Um, and of course, as always, have have the the movie link and and the books, and um, I'll try and find some photos of you with your eyes closed <laughs> to put into the show notes uh, that we'll have up on online at uh, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. dot com. So um, yeah, Michelle, I want to thank you for for being here, and I appreciate your time. Yeah, and thank you for for asking me. It's it's been a lot of fun. Thanks for listening to this episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Thank you to Miss Moreau for coming on and talking to me. Please be sure to subscribe to the show so you never miss one of our weekly episodes. If you do like the show, we'd appreciate a five-star review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can check out the show notes at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And if you'd like to learn more about what we offer at Whistlekick Sparring Gear and Apparel, please check us out at whistlekick.com. Train hard and have a great day.